Hey, what's up, guys? I'm uh, just showed up at Mark Twight's. Uh, Mark Twight is a, I look at him as a mentor in a, in a passive way. Somebody who I highly respected and still do in uh, the area of functional fitness. Um, I'm a big fan of um, uh, people who think outside the box. Mark's always done that. Um, and he's somebody that I have looked into, have done a lot of research, and then utilized his workout programs back when I was a young special operations guy. So this is going to be awesome. Going, sir. How are you? Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. Pleasure, Pleasure to meet you. Welcome. Yeah, it's an honor. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is the the shop, huh? Yeah, more or less. I like it. I like it. Very inconspicuous. So what is it? What like, is the stuff that you're starting now? Is it a new name or it's always been? No, it's like we. Michael and I kind of started this project. It would have been in like 20, late 2017. Just decided, okay, I'm not doing these movie gigs anymore. I'm, the last job I did, I realized, man, I'm. I've learned as much as I'm going to learn. I'm only here for the paycheck. Yeah. I don't want that to be me. Yeah. Michael said, aren't you, we met for coffee one day. He said, aren't you really pissed of all these people that are taking credit for your work? You should write a book about all that movie training and stuff and set the record straight. And I was just like, yeah, we should do that. Mm. And he said, no, 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 I meant you. And I said, mother Yeah, you need to help me. me. Yeah, this, is, this is how this is going to happen. Yeah. Are you still training people? We launched this a subscription model. Yep. He said, all right, it's going to, you know, for this first beta period is three months long. We opened it a 24 hour window that you could buy into because we, we thought, uh, fucking, if we get a hundred people, it'll be fine. And we had what? 478 people sign up in 24 hours. Wow. At the 1999 a month threshold. And it's and, an online, it's like a virtual yeah. online thing. Yeah. I'd spent some time with the Texas Rangers and, uh, and the spring training camp. And I was very much in shock when I looked at their daily fitness routine of like not doing really anything. Like they show up and they, they do this. And I'm like, wait, these are professional athletes? And then I realized that the game wasn't making them look like something they wanted to be. It was the longevity of a 20 year yes. contract worth $95 million. And these guys needed to sustain that for yes. 20 years. Um, and then like, even when I was a team sergeant and I had a team of snipers, like I started looking at fitness differently because I went, well, your job is to be fit in the role uh, of running around with kit and then doing whatever is required of you uh, during that rotation. Yeah. And so they would be like, well, what are we doing for PT today? I'm like, run to the, run to the range yeah. in all your kit that you're going to shoot with and then shoot for four hours and then run back. And they're like, that's like a 12 mile run. Like, well, that's what you're going to do. Oh crap. I mean, you asked. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, you what, what do you mean? We're not going to do chests and tries or back and body. We're not going to like, no, that I don't want you to aesthetically look good for your wife. I want you to be a good operator and to function well. And I'm like, man, the way we look at fitness, which is mostly anabolic as a market, it, it where everybody's just like drink this protein powder. Cause it's going to make you look like you're on a thousand milligrams of anabolic steroids. Well, that's what it is. That whole in thing is a big lie. It's just so bizarre to me. Oh. I mean, our whole thing here has been, like our hashtag is fitness is fucked. Yeah. And we've been teaching some symposiums and that kind of thing based on that model is to say like, look, everybody who comes with the thing, you know, comes with an idea or whatever. It's because there's something that, that's being sold. Yes. You know, in, in conjunction with it. That's and, it. And as long as it's that, then it, it can't grow because it's yeah. always tied to your supplement thing or your special piece of gear yeah. or your clothing line or your shoes or yeah. your system. You know, people come in just for masturbatory fitness problems. Um, and you go like they need their pre-workout. They need their, you know, regimented doses of nutrients. And then right after they have, and you're like, how much are you teaching your body if it's on a program? If it's always receiving the same sustenance, when is it ever adapting and being like, whoa, that was a really hard workout and you didn't give me any food after, so I have to increase these stores so next time I eat, I actually get used to this. This is like one of the problems with regimens. Nature just loves variation, period, in every aspect. It selects for it. It's just like, if there's no variation, that thing dies. Yeah. And so the, the routine is the same thing. If you don't vary 
every aspect about your physiology, uh, you know, to a good standard, you're not going to be very adaptable. What people are actually looking for is a sense of accomplishment. So if you tell them, yes. I'm going to break you down in three minutes, they're like, oh my God, that was the best workout ever. It's like, wow, that was easy for me because I just made some shit up and destroyed you. Yeah. And now you walk away feeling accomplished. But if the point is creating a perception of being broken down and then repairing parts of your body that were broken down physically, then yeah, we accomplish that all day long. Uh, and there's like one applicable thing that I found with anybody working is if you can get them curious about their own ability, you can do anything. The person that comes in that's not interested but wants the result, that person will, it doesn't matter what you do, they'll never respond. In the, uh, in the summer of 07 in Iraq, uh, I brought the 300 workout to all my guys. And I was a sniper at the time. And so all my guys, we were lean. Kevin was in that as well. And we were, cause we were building climbers. We had to climb buildings in, in, in Iraq. And I brought the 300 workout to my assaulters. And we were in a gym just like this. And we did the 300 workout and I smoked the hell out of all of them. Like, and they were like, you know, the, the box jumps, all the different things. They yeah. were completely spit, like laying on the ground, like, like blue. I remember all of them going, how is this possible that Mike and Kevin are, su are able to efficiently get through this program, yeah. but we can't. And that made a lot of those guys cross over and go, okay, so what is the secret in the sauce? I'm like, well, what you're doing is part of the secret because that's wrong. Like you're, you're going in the gym and you're lifting weights, staring at yourself. So you're inefficient. I mean, you're, you're, you have a lot of muscle that requires a lot of oxygen and you don't need all that muscle. <laughs> and so let, let's lean you out. And some of those guys, by the end of it, were doing 300 workouts every week or every other week, assessing, like that was their measure of success. They were like, yeah. okay, I got through 300 without puking. And now I feel like I'm accomplishing something. Yeah. But that curiosity, all of them were like, But Damn, dry heaving is yeah. a f***ing great ab workout. It, it's <laughs> crazy. Like dudes are puking in the big gray trash cans and yeah. not knowing why. And like, well, that's, well, that's because we're snipers and we're better. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That's really cool. That's really cool. And this is, uh, this is our. <laughs> this is a cool podcast, podcast studio. studio. <laughs> and it's, and it, yeah, so it's pretty informal. Sometimes we'll just come in, sit down, do, you know, half an hour. Sometimes they're three hours. hours. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've discovered that. that. Me and Andy did a four hour the other day. And I was like, nice. Did we just go four hours? Is, like, yep. is he going to split it into two? Or no, he already he, dropped it. It's. Four, oh. I think it's three hours and 50 minutes or something like that. And nice. Wow. Um, from about 17,000 feet on McKinley looking at Mount Hunter. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, this was actually a job I had guys with damn neck, from Damn Neck with me on this trip. Were you actually. on oxygen on that? Oh, no. Oh, really? Oh, hell no. I mean, it's like, that's cheating in a way. I mean, it's like, hey, you go to the natural environment to test yourself against the natural environment, then why would you? Bring the thing that yeah. manipulates it. You always been into photography, is that? Um, it was something I kind of had to do to support climbing. Yeah. In a way of like, if I'm writing articles, then you have to have the photography to support it. Yeah. Um, you know about what I was doing, and then I turned out I could just carry the camera everywhere, and I still pretty much do. I think it's. I've, I've always been a big photographer at war, and people, you know, like people are like, "Oh, why are you always taking pictures?" I'm like, because I'm trying to capture a moment where I know a lot of people don't have the opportunity to be in that moment. Yeah. And I want to keep and capture that. And so I always think about, you know, especially mountain climbers or people who do these huge expeditions when you, like only a few people in the world can catch something like that. Yeah. Who actually have the photography skills, but who have the access and place to, to get to the place, to get to that place. And then I also have a, like a penchant sort of for like trying to make utterly mundane things. Cool. Um, interesting. Beautiful or interesting. <laughs> Some way. So cool, man. That's a wide. Mountaineering is I, when I when I think Mark Mark Twight, I think of the mountain. Like I associate you with an elite mountaineering endurance athlete. That's like the initial thing that pops okay. in my head. Is that where it began? Is that is that like where your journey in in all this started? I mean, if 
If we don't want to discuss, you know, childhood truancy and the problems with authority and shit like that, yeah, I started with climbing. Yeah. <laughs> Which was kind of at the time, like I started climbing in like 1980. I think I knew it was going to happen. I spent the, you know, most of was born in Yosemite National Park, lived there for two years, then Mount Rainier National Park for three years because my dad was a uh, National Park Service ranger. You were actually and, born in the park. Yeah, I was born in the park. I was born in the clinic. Really? Yeah, yeah clinic baby. That is awesome. <laughs> That's actually really cool.